Today we're going to look at the Singer Model 347. This model is from the very early 1960s with metal gears. It came with its own hard plastic case in matching blue. And it can also be mounted in a table in many of the Singer tables. It has the holes back there to fit onto the lollipop type hinges. Today we're just going to take a little tour of the machine and I'll wind the bobbin, thread the needle, and do some basic sewing. The features of the machine are you have a presser foot, pressure control. Turning to the right puts more pressure on the presser foot. Turning to the left is lighter. And there's a little gauge right here with a little red needle that goes up and down. So you can actually have a number reference if you'd like. In the front we have our very standard uh, Singer upper thread tension assembly from uh, zero to nine. And like every singer I've ever worked on in my life, a lever back here that raises the pressure foot at the same time releasing pressure on the tension discs. The thread uptake lever, upper thread guide. We have a sliding lever here for stitch width zero for straight and then coming over from there up to four for the widest zigzag. Also as many of the singers it has a needle position lever where you usually keep it in center but you can move the needle left or right which is really good when you're putting in zippers or doing edge sewing. A stitch length lever uh, rated from 6 up to more than 20 and all the way up for reverse. A stitch length can be locked in if you want, in this example 8, by turning this a little bit, putting some tension there, it won't go below 8. It will go up for zigzag, or I'm sorry, it will go up for reverse and then you can just quickly put it right back down to your stitch length. So if you like that, that's available. If you do it more freestyle, you, you can just leave that loose and move it at your will. This is the bobbin winding area with a bobbin fill stop. Just a little lever to move the uh, winding mechanism over when you have your bobbin on there just slides like that. And really what that's doing is just putting a bobbin wire time tire against the inside of the big wheel so that when the wheel turns this spins and winds the bobbin. And this has a screw you can loosen it and adjust to adjust how full you want the bobbin. If you want to use that you can adjust it and then as the bobbin fills, the thread will push against here and the winder will move away from the wheel inside and stop winding. Um, the on-off switch combined for power and light. A bobbin winding tension disc, which I'll show you in use in a moment. And like most singers of the era and before, there's a double wheel, the chrome inside and the metal outside, so loosening it to the left, an eighth of a turn, disengages the needle bar and the feed dogs. So all you're doing is winding the bobbin. When you want to sew, you just turn it back to the right. 
and it's a three-way cord. This is the plug that goes into the machine. One lead goes to the electrical outlet and the other lead goes to the foot pedal. And it just goes right down here and plugs in. There we can see I, our light came on. So that's that's basic. It's very very common machine. This um, slide plate covers a front horizontal rotary drop-in bobbin area, and it uses a very common class 66 type bobbin in plastic or metal. And once it's wound, you'll see it just drops right in. Uh, it's a re removable needle plate lifting up on one side and sliding out from under here and then sliding back under here and dropping down. Needle holder thumb screw, presser foot thumb screw. Again, they're very typical standard sewing machine setup. So if we'll wind a bobbin first, we'll just start up at the top with a spool of thread and put it on the spindle up there and we will come over to the top thread guide and just Clip it in like that. It just snaps right in. Our presser foot must be up to release tension. We'll bring the thread between the two silver discs there, which is how the device applies tension. We'll pull off some slack. We'll hold the thread so we can't pull slack. And we're going to pull this thread up on the check spring and we're going to hook it behind that little hook right there. So that little hook is going to keep the thread lined up and the check spring keeps tension on the thread while the needle's in motion. And we'll just come right back through the same guide here bring your lifter up to the top and we'll thread that just by placing the thread right through the hole and bringing it down. So at this point if you have some slack in your hand here you can just drop this foot which will put tension on here and you can check to be sure that you're on the check spring and your thread is between this hook and you. Then as we continue down this model they put another thread guide on the face plate. So the face plate thread guide. You thread that through you can see kind of an indentation or a notch there. So we'll, that's designed for the thread there. There's a little pigtail or curly wire here on the needle bar. So that's the needle bar thread guide. Come behind it from right to left and over that pin and whoops, over that edge and into the hole like that. And then the very last is the needle ball holder thread guide, which is this little slot right there. Very, very small slot. And just put the thread in there and pull it down. A lot of people don't know about that or forget about it, don't see it, don't realize what it is. But it's really designed to keep the thread perfectly lined with the needle. Then at this point, you want to thread your needle. Needle is the standard Singer 2020 nowadays better known as 15x1 or 15 by 1 
This machine can take size 9 through 16. It's flat on the back, so when you stick it up in here, it can only go in one way, flat to the back, and then you tighten the needle thumb screw. And then again, I'm going to thread it front to back, but I'm not going to make you watch that. So as soon as I get that done, I'll come back and continue the video. Okay, I have the I have the needle threaded now front to back, so you can see the basic threading, very standard like I said before. Through the guide, through the guide, between the discs, the check spring, the little hook, up through the thread take up lever, down through some more guides, and through the needle front to back on this machine. So I'll also wind a bobbin here. You would use the same um, spindle here to wind a bobbin, but whatever thread you're going to use. This time you only come through the top thread guide, like that. And then you're going to come down, and at this point is when I get the bobbin prepared, because there's, there's two holes, little holes, on either side and you need to any any of the four holes you just need to come from in between the sides and out one of the holes like that and then leave yourself two or three inches there to, to hang on to and then you're going to push it onto this bobbin spindle all the way I said all the way. Oh, there we go. And then you will move this to the right, which again engages the tire to the wheel. You're going to hold the outer wheel and turn that inner chrome wheel towards you. Because you don't you don't need the feed dogs and bobbin hook and needle moving while you do this. And then you have to remember to get this thread under this little tension disc. That helps keep proper tension on this so it winds the bobbin very smoothly. So that's how I do it. Some people put the bobbin on first and go backwards. Some follow the path from the upper guide to the bobbin tension spring and up and then. But as long as you end up like this, you'll be fine. The machine has to be turned on. We've loosened the inner wheel. So you just start uh, winding the bobbin a little bit, holding this thread. When you get some on there, you want to clip this off. And then you just continue to wind at a moderate pace, and you'll see the thread going back and forth, back and forth. I'm not going to wind the whole the whole bobbin here, but you get the idea. I do have this set, so as the bobbin is almost full, it will push against this stop and push the winder away and stop winding. That's about a third of a wind. That's enough for me. When you're finished with this, you move this back away so your tire's not hitting the wheel. Pull this off. Take it off of here. Uh, and since I'm going to use a different color top thread, I'll just pull this away. And I'll put my top thread back up here on the spindle. And remember to tighten your wheel so you can sew. Now we're going to drop this drop-in bobbin in. So the thread should be coming off counterclockwise, like that. I'm going to just drop it right in the hole. And then hold the bobbin with the finger while you pull this thread through the first notch. 
and in between the bobbin holder and the bobbin tension spring. Then slide it along and come out this second notch over here. A lot of some people miss that, and that's why they don't get a good stitch. So you can see as the thread's going to come off, it's going to turn this bobbin counterclockwise in through the first notch, behind the spring, and out the second notch. Just pull it across at a diagonal, left to right, and then you can close the slide plate. Before we can sew, we've got to bring up the bobbin thread. So you hold your needle thread, and you start turning the wheel towards you, the hand wheel, and the hook will start rotating. Maybe I should open that and you can see. This hook is going to rotate. Every other time around it grabs the th needle thread. So it's grabbed it right now. It's right here in the hook. It's going to drag that dark thread across the top of the bobbin and it's going to release it right there. And that's how it makes the stitch. You don't have to do that to bring up the thread. As soon as you can tell the thread's connected, you just the bobbin thread is hooked, you just pull up the upper thread and you'll see that it brings up the bobbin thread right there. So you just want to pull that up. So that's what pulling up the bobbin thread means. You're pulling up the bobbin thread through the little hole in the needle plate. So we've got it up there now. I'm going to take it to the back. I'm going to take the upper thread through the toes of this all-purpose foot and to the back. So that's how it should look when you're ready to sew. Then I'll just sew some uh, basic. I'll put my medium I'm going to sew on under here, drop the foot. I'm going to set the needle tension. This is just a simple straight stitch, so about three or four. I have my needle in the center position. The stitch width is on zero because I want to straight stitch, so zero zigzag movement. I'm going to take the longest stitch I can, which is what you would do normally for coarse or heavy fabric. The take-up lever you would normally start in the up position. You see as I raise this, it's going to start sucking the thread. So you don't want it to get sucked in. So you either need to hold it and start sh sewing, or turn the hand wheel towards you until this has peaked out. Then it won't pull on this thread anymore. So it's up to you. Hold it when you start, or start from the up position. And then just apply pressure to the foot pedal and start sewing. if you want to back tack your, your seam or your stitching, whatever you do, you just move this lever all the way up for reverse feed and sew a few stitches. Lift your presser foot and we're done. I'm just going to sew over here a little bit. Uh, to get over over to another, uh, whoops, I left it in reverse. To get over to another spot here with my, I'll turn this and I'll do some zigzag here now. So I'll start out with one, still in the center position. I'll do a little bit shorter stitch here, about a 12 kind of a medium length stitch. And I'll sew 
sum in width 1, then 2, then 3, then 4. So here's my width 1 on a 12 length stitch. I'll go to which two, uh, width 2. And you can go two and a quarter, or three and a third, or three and a half. You can, it's a sliding scale, so you can, let me go a little bit longer. You can go as long as, you know, any, any place you want. This is the maximum width. If you wanted to do some uh, satin stitching, I, I usually do it around two or two and a half. But you can move this up into a very fine area. You've got to play with it a little bit to get your thread as close together as you can. If you go too high, your feed dogs will not pull the fabric, or you'll go in reverse. So you got to you got to play with it a little bit. Let's see how we do here. Yeah, that's pretty fine. It's barely moving the fabric. Let me just come down just a, just a n little bit there. Yep, still, still not moving much. Yep. I think the thread might be hung up now. <laughs> Yeah, I tried to go. I tried to go a little too fine there, and I got it wrapped up in here. I'm sure it's caught on the back of the bobbin hook. So let me raise the needle and clean this up, and then we'll continue. Okay, I got this cleaned up. Uh, the best way to do that is to cut your bobbin threads, snip it off pull the bobbin up and then I was able to raise the needle and I'll show you what happens I tried to go too fine and you can see it wasn't pulling my medium through so it just kept kinda of sewing in the same little sixteenth of an inch there and it just made such a big knot that it finally got stuck in the needle hole of the needle plate so by snipping off that bobbing thread, taking it out, I was then able to raise up my needle through this big rat's nest and get, get my medium back out of there. So I, I pulled up the bobbing thread again. I'm going to go over here and drop my needle again and I, I really would like to see about the uh, satin stitching so I'm not quite so fine now I'm about 20 stitches per inch so I'm, I'm gonna try this again about a three let's let's see here if, if, if it does better this time Whoop. Let me start here now you see it's pulling the the medium through, but it's not really a satin stitch. So I'm going to try again, bump it up a little bit, and see if I can get those stitches closer together. Still not there. Go up a little bit more. almost there. Okay, just a little bit. Let's see. Is it still going to pull? Yep. Oh, I'm so close. Enough. It's, it doesn't want to pull the fabric through here. There we go. Come back down to a narrower. 
So once, once you get some practicing in and stuff, you can do a better uh, satin stitch with it. The other thing I didn't do is when you are doing zigzag, you should lighten up your upper thread tension. You should lighten that up. You don't need as much tension up here when the needle is uh, zigzagging back and forth. So we'll, we'll check our tensions on, on the other... Uh-oh. Uh Did I do it again? We'll, we'll check our tensions on the other... Uh, uh, yep. Yeah, see? We'll, we'll check our tension on the other uh, side here. Let me go back to... a more normal. Uh, here's about an eight, eighth length with a four zigzag and a little bit lighter tension, about a two, two and a half. reverse on a zigzag stitch too. So there's some straight stitching, some satin stitch. You got to play around with that and find each machine's sweet spot. Let's look at these backside tensions. Yeah. It was a little bit of a struggle here because I forgot to lighten the upper tension. You can see how that pulling the thread through. These last ones were very nice. The straight stitch, very nice tension. Just on the standard four. These are actually pretty good. I think the satin stitch would be a little smoother if I lightened it up a little bit. So some beautiful stitches, which is what, you, what I think of is with a, with a singer. Uh, I think that's about everything. Thanks for watching my attempt at satin stitching today. And thanks for watching the video. See you next time.